I think people, when they think about oyster, they think about celebration. Oyster and champagne, oyster and white burgundy, or whatever they want to drink. Even oyster and bourbon, it's not wrong with that. I think it's a celebration oyster. I think you just want to relax and have like a few dozen of oyster and just lay back and chill. Hi, my name is Giuseppe Santori. I'm the secret chef and partner at GT Fish and Oyster. Chicago is an amazing food city. We are like right in the middle of the United States, between the two coasts. Yeah, it is challenging, but these days everything is shipped in. So I think you have sometimes better seafood than the place near to the coast. It's a very casual restaurant, so it's full of energy. You have TV, you have beer on tap. After a few drinks, you feel like you're on a ship. I grew up in Italy. Italy is like a small little country, but every small uh, little town, paese, every little house in this paese, they'll make like the same thing, but like in a different way, and they think it's the best way. Growing up in my grandma's farm, you know, it was uh, very interesting because I appreciate from that time on how much effort goes into product. Product is not just uh, fish, meat, vegetable. Product is understand what is coming from, how much work it takes to grow that product. Il mio piatto preferito che mia nonna faceva it was this dish of lilies of polenta. But her polenta, the way she was making, she kept storing it for like hours. I'm like, why can't keep storing it? Why don't you just leave it there? Like, no, it will not taste the same. My cooking philosophy at GT and in general when I cook, I don't like to use much cream and butter. The menu is divided into two parts. You have 15 cold and 15 hot. You can have like six, seven dishes, you still feel light. We have the shrimp bruschetta. We put like this great avocado mousse on top. Pieces of grapefruit, two to three shrimp, cut on a half. Pickle fresno, some cilantro. Then we finish the dish with a little pistachio already toast. The amachi crudo. So for amachi crudo, we have a little cantaloupe melon, beautiful thin slice of amachi. We put miso aioli, pickled fresno, some cilantro, we make some pantu broth, that's it. Here I want to create like a dish when you can try like at least four different types of smoked fish. We cure them in beaches, and then we smoke it. So it's nice, bright and red outside and pink in the middle. Sometimes you have sturgeon, sometimes you have shrimp, salmon. Escola. You know, you're supporting farmers. For the most part, shellfishing is a kind of a small time family trade. You know, at a restaurant, they have a sommelier. I think everybody knows these days who it is and what he does. Ajit Fish and Oyster, we have uh, Oyster Melier. Okay, so I watched the movie Psalm. And then I sort of made a goofy joke. It's like we can all be oyster meliers. Oyster melier. His name is Colin. Chef. Because uh, his knowledge and his passion about oyster. Chef really liked that term. I never see anybody like him. I've got some family from Wellfleet, Massachusetts, and I originally went out there to help my mom fix up a property and I sort of fell in love with the place. I just picked it up and, you know, started shucking oysters and then one thing led to another. Answer a few Craigslist ads and here you are. So, for example, this is a Totten Inlet oyster. This is a beach-raised oyster. You can tell because it has, like, some barnacles going on. It's a little bit different from, like, a um, Miyagi which is raised in what's called a lantern net. It never touches the sea floor, and all these things incorporate into what the oyster ends up tasting like. More than any other food that I've experienced, oysters really absorb the flavors of what's around them. On East Coast, you have much more open ocean salt, and then West Coast has sort of more of like a brininess. You get up further north, you get kind of a different minerality, and as you go further south, they'll tend to be a little bit more mild. Sometimes I'll say like melon or cucumber. 
really it's just the flavor of the seaweed mixing with the sugar that the oyster's storing so it can survive the winter that makes it sweet like that. Some people like to use cocktail sauce or mignonettes, but if you really want to get like an understanding of what is going on flavor-wise between oysters, you're never going to get it with cocktail sauce. Now we're off on a culinary adventure. We're going to go visit Charlie Trotter's. I came to Chicago when I was about 20 years old. Then in 98, I started working for Charlie Trotter. Uh, Charlie Trotter, I didn't know much about Charlie Trotter. Now, what you have here is in parchment paper wild mushrooms, which have been roasted with baby white asparagus and quail egg in a little bit of truffle oil. So when you open up the parchment paper, you just get this rush of white truffle oil. I did not know what I was getting to in 1998. My first two, three months, it was like, not pure hell, you know, it was pretty tough. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. Excellent mall! If you just ordered off the menu, it would be a very healthy meal that you ate. But more importantly, it would be a delicious meal. It would satisfy your soul, it would satisfy your intellect, it would satisfy your sensual needs as much as just your physical needs. That would be secondary, that would happen sort of as a byproduct. So I was a two-year line cook, then I was turned on, then I became a sous chef, and uh, the last two years I was chef de cuisine. He was like an intimidated kind of guy, but he wasn't. They almost didn't want to bother him, but he would get sort of upset if you don't say hi to him. Charlie's line is like, what's up? You know, he never say hi. What kind of generation is that? But I tell all my staff too, like, say hi when you walk in on the way. Why are you wait like 20 minutes to say hi? Just say hi as a sense of respect. I think Charlie teach everybody how to be a nice human being and how to be a gentleman more than anything. Charlie was very unique because he was at this time. You know, he did so many things in his own way. I tried to get to see everything. It's not just being in the kitchen and cooking and be focused on one little box. You gotta see like what's around you all the time. I can see what the customer need most of the time before they need it. I can send my guys, you know, take care of them. That's what they don't know a trotter. That's why poor not Chicago on the map, like everybody said. He did a lot of great stuff for Chicago. He did more than put Chicago on the map. He inspired so many people in his restaurant. It's too much controversy on that one. <laughs> what the city can do better in Chicago also in a restaurant scene, everybody should go try new restaurant more often. Like a small little restaurant, mom and pop like the 20, 36 restaurant, go check it out. Don't be afraid of it. Go check this restaurant, the chefs there are so talented. One of the most beautiful things I can do for you, or that any of us can do for another, is we can serve each other. It's, it's one of the most human things, it's one of the most basic things. One family member serving another, one friend serving another. But you do that from the heart. You don't do that because you're being ordered to do it or because it's just a job. Uh, you're doing that because you want to do that. You're doing that because you want to connect with somebody.